I've always been fascinated by the complexity of our brains, and today, we're diving into a question that sparked countless debates. Are male and female brains actually different? This question is often misrepresented. Today, we'll examine what science, rather than myth, reveals about the structure and function of male and female brains. Okay, so before we dive into the differences, or similarities, between male and female brains, we need to understand how scientists actually study these squishy thinking machines. It's not like we can just pop open someone's skull and have a look. Instead, we use some seriously cool tech. We've got MRI scans that give us detailed 3D images of brain structure, fMRI that shows us which parts of the brain light up during different activities, and even something called diffusion tensor imaging that maps out the brain's internal wiring. Um, and this is crucial, when scientists talk about differences between male and female brains, they're usually talking about averages. There's a massive overlap, and that's something we need to keep in mind throughout this whole discussion. Now let's tackle one of the most common claims you might have heard. Male brains are bigger than female brains. And you know what? On average, that's actually true. Male brains tend to be about 10% larger than female brains. But hang on a minute, before anyone gets too excited, we need to think about this. Is bigger always better when it comes to brains? Well, as it turns out, not really. You see, that size difference pretty much disappears when you account for body size. And more importantly, brain size doesn't equate to intelligence or capability. It's all about how those neurons are connected and how efficiently they work together. Okay, so, if size isn't the big differentiator, what about the way our brains are wired up? This is where things get really interesting. Some studies suggest that male brains might have more connections within each hemisphere, while female brains might have stronger connections between the two hemispheres. The corpus callosum, that's the big bundle of fibers connecting the two hemispheres, shows some variation between males and females, but the overlap is enormous. And remember, we're always talking about averages. There are plenty of males with typically female connectivity patterns and vice versa. Our brains are more like unique mosaics than strictly male or female patterns. Now this is really cool. Let's talk about hormones. These chemical messengers play a huge role in shaping our brains, starting way before we're even born. Estrogen, testosterone, and other sex hormones influence how our brains develop in the womb and continue to affect brain function throughout our lives, it's like they're the conductors of a complex neural orchestra. In females, brain function can actually fluctuate with the menstrual cycle. Isn't that wild? Certain areas, particularly those involved in memory and emotion, can show changes in activity at different points in the cycle. Let's think about this. If male and female brains do have some average differences, does that mean men and women think differently? Well, some studies have found small average differences in certain cognitive abilities. For example, some research suggests that males might perform slightly better on certain spatial tasks, while females might have an edge in verbal fluency and emotional recognition. But, um, the crucial part, and I can't stress this enough, the differences between individuals are way, way bigger than any average difference between the sexes. It's like if you plotted these abilities on a graph, you'd see two big overlapping blobs rather than two distinct groups, and many of these differences might be more about socialization and experience than innate biology. Plus, our brains are incredibly adaptable. Practice can dramatically change our abilities in any of these areas. Okay, so now that we've looked at the science, let's bust some myths. You've probably heard things like, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, or that men and women have fundamentally different ways of thinking, but the reality is there's no such thing as a purely male brain or female brain. Our brains are more like mosaics, with each person having a unique combination of features that might be more typically associated with males or females. Now, here's something that really blows my mind. Brain plasticity. Our brains are incredibly adaptable, constantly changing in response to our experiences, education, and environment. This means that a lot of the differences we see in adult brains might be more about lived experiences than innate biology. It's a reminder that our brains are not fixed, they're dynamic, ever-changing organs that can adapt and grow throughout our lives. So there you have it. While average biological differences exist, they don't define identity or potential. 
The science of sex-based brain differences is complex, fascinating, and far more nuanced than stereotypes suggest. Our brains are wonderfully diverse and adaptable, defying simple categorization. So the next time someone tries to tell you that men and women have completely different brains, well, you know better.